Well, thank you for coming. Didn't give you a lot of notice, but thank you. Uh, let me see, where, where did I start? Uh, I guess I guess we better start from the very beginning, and that's just this. From my announcement to run, you know, I have I have tried to stand rock solid with the common everyday West Virginian. I mean, that's what I want goodness for in every way. I've stood rock solid behind education being our centerpiece. Now, we surely have a dilemma that's gone on and on and on. And so, I will promise you this too, that no one has worked this harder than I to try to come to a solution and to come to compromise. Because at the end of the day, that's what this process is supposed to be about. So over the weekend, on Friday evening, I could see, you know, where groups and uh, individuals were becoming even more polarized. And so I thought, you know, there's, it's time to, to quit saying what we won't do and for sure say what we will do. So I called Mitch Carmichael and I called Tim Armstead and I asked them if they would come in on Saturday morning and meet me. And we did. And basically I said, I want to know exactly where you're going to go. Where are you going to go if we have no resolution where we're at? And so the net net of what they said was, I want to show you the Carmichael side. Mitch's plan was, if the PIT comes out, then they've got to go back to the 4.055, which really now turns into a 4.01. And they've got to then, basically, you left out part of this. If we go to 4.1, you're going to have, versus a 4.37, you're going to have a $270 million hole that has to come from cuts. If you plug in the revenue increase of $100 million, you're going to still have a $170 million shortfall. Now, Mitch said they don't want to do this, but this is the only place they have to turn. Now show them Armstead's. Tim says that if the PIT comes out, they're going to go back to a 6% consumer sales tax. The same broadening is going to be there, except what's going to come in is direct use transportation ex exclusive of coal hauling. What's going to go out is the contracting broadening exemption, you know, is going to go back to the way it was. The Social Security could go to 100,000 over three years. The personal exemption of could, it, their good was going from 2,000 to 2,500. What's coming out is the teacher's pay raise, all the tourism SOS money's coming out. There has to be an additional cut to WVU and to Marshall of 2%, and the gas tax would go to the bonding and be voted on at that time. The net after you do all that is there still is going to be a hole and that hole is argumentative whether it's going to be 40 or 70 million dollars but there's going to have to be more cuts beyond this. 
We know the teacher's pay raise would come out of this. We know the SOS money would come out. We know additional cuts to Marshall and WVU would happen. And then, and we know the gas tax would go to a vote. And then there's still going to be 40 to $70 million of a hole. Now that's Tim's plan if, if there's nowhere else to go. That's what it has to be. Now, here's what I did. And I want everybody to hear me loud and clear on this. I have from day one said that the wealthy need to step up. The wealthiest of our people need to step up. I have proposed a wealthy West Virginians tax. I would be first to say that anybody that has an income greater than $300,000 a year, let's don't give them anything. I proposed that to Mitch and to Tim when they were here. I said, you've got to let me go with this. They agreed. They didn't like it, but they agreed that anybody that has an income greater than $300,000 gets nothing in the PIT, nothing. And that's how I think it ought to be. Now show them my plan. Now this basically is my plan. It's the PIT, but let's go to the middle of that box. I said, get helping the rich out of your mind once and for all. Take that off the table. That should not be there. You're going, there's zero tax benefit coming to anybody that's got a $300,000 income. I said, we've got to come up with a way to get through this trigger issue so no matter what, Eric Nelson's triggers are, and I know everybody believes that Eric will protect this state and he will do it in a prudent way. We've got to quit arguing about what the triggers are and go with his triggers. They agreed. They agreed. Now, so it's exactly the plan. It's the same broadening. Contracting's coming out. Direct use transportation goes in. It goes to a 6.35 sales tax, not 6.5, 6.35, and it has all the good, all the good. Now, I didn't list every bit of it, but it's the personal exemption, it's the SOS money, it's no further cuts, it helps the vets, it helps our Social Security exemption, there's no more cuts to WVU and Marshall, the entire roads package is done. Not, in, not for a vote, it's done. It helps our teachers and it helps our miners. The historical credit is back in. It's all together. Now we agreed, the three of us, that here's what we would do. That I would present that to the Democratic caucus. The House and the Senate. And today, what we would do, if, if nobody waffles on what, and gosh knows, that's perfectly possible at this place. But we would do one of the three today. Today, it's time to vote. Now, I don't know that they'll do that, but that's what we agreed to do. If they don't back up on their word, that's what we agreed to do. With all in me, I think it is absolutely, without question, this is the way we ought to go. This way, even Mitch doesn't want to do this. This way still hurts a lot, a lot, a lot of people that we don't have to hurt. A lot of people get hurt in this that we don't have to hurt. In my way, everybody wins and you know who wins the most in the in the personal income tax deduction who do you think wins the most in this who do you think now now that we've got this crazy stuff off the table about helping the rich who do we benefit the most 
the poor, the common, the middle class. That's who I've wanted to help more than anybody on the planet from day one. I don't want our schools to get hurt. I don't want our people to get hurt. I don't want our poor and our disabled to get hurt. I want to help our vets. I want to help our people. I want, I want the wealthy to step up and say, for right now, I've got enough. I got enough. And for right now, I want to help our state. That's what I've said from day one. Now, it's time to vote. It's time to vote. Now, without any question, a million to one, that's the way we should go. Let me say one other thing. As far as tearing the severance tax on coal, this, it's not, this is not about Murray. It's not about the Coal Association. It's about one thing. Ask yourself, at $40 a ton, at $40 a ton, can you mine coal in West Virginia? Can you do it? We have evidence in front of us of coal company after coal company after coal company went out of business, didn't we? And when they went out of business, our miners went home. Did they not? Over and over and over, that's what happened. At $40 a ton, we give a break to those coal companies. If you can't mine it at $40 a ton, we're sure as a dick is not going to get any severance tax at $40. And I'm telling you, you can't mine it at $40 a ton and stay in business today. So why in the world shouldn't we give a break to those and keep our miners working? Doesn't have a thing in the world to do with the Coal Association, doesn't have anything to do with Murray, doesn't have anything to do with any of those people. It has everything to do with just one thing, the guy getting his dinner bucket and going to work. That's it. Because it can't be mined at $40 a ton very profitably. Just can't be. Today, steam coal on the NS 12.5 BTU is trading for 55.50 today. I have said it and said it and said it. At $75, which is $20 away, we make more money than you can imagine on the upside from the tiering on severance tax. Today, it's 55.50. Why, if it were at 40 bucks, wouldn't we give a break to keep our miners working? That's all there is to that. So, I've tried to craft this this way. I've tried to craft it to help education, to help our miners, to help our poor and our people that could really get hurt by, by further big time cuts. And I've tried to craft it in a way from the personal income tax to be able to help all of our families that are struggling and make all of them net positive on the money that's coming to them after they pay a little bit more on, sever on, on consumer sales tax or a little bit more on the gas or whatever it may be. So that's what I've done. I'll take any questions that you may have. The last thing, let me, let me add one last thing on this. Where did, where did the tearing on the severance tax come from? Where did the idea come from in the beginning? Where did the, the meeting between me and, and Bob Murray come from? It came from, from Cecil Roberts. Cecil called me and asked me if I would meet with Bob Murray. You know why? Because Cecil is concerned about his miners. That's where the meeting came from. And then I agreed to do that. And then I met with Bob Murray. Now, y'all ask anything you choose to ask now. Uh, on the roads package, does that mean four and a half cents on gallon gas and no bond vote to the public? It means it, it's not four and a half cents. I think it's about three and a half cents. Okay. It's the wholesale part of the gas. Okay. It's no retail, no retail side at all. The retail side is gone. It's only the wholesale portion. The re retail side, we don't need now. So there's no bond issue then either? No there's no purposes. bonding there at all. Senator, I thought the bond already passed. The bond initiative passed during the regular session, I thought. Well, it's not bond initiative. It's 
No, no. What I'm saying is, is putting it to the vote of the people for the bond. It's never gone to the people yet. And it, but so we have permission to take it to the people, but we don't have it to the people yet. Ashley, you understand what I'm saying? I do. So that means you are not going to issue a special election for, for the bond. No, we definitely will, but there's under, I mean, and these people are trying. Now, I mean, I, 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 want to, I want to emphasize, they're really trying, okay? But under Speaker Armstead, Speaker Armstead wants to put in the, in the bond vote. He wants to put in it that you have the right to vote on the gas tax as well as the bond to get, as well as putting it together in a bond. Okay, I don't think we ought to do that, you know, because we should have a job here. Our job ought to be to do stuff. What we should be voting on is putting it all together in a bond or not. We shouldn't be out voting on the DMV fees or the gas tax or that kind of stuff. In my opinion, that's what we're here to do. That's our job. And so in my proposal, we would pass the tax on the, on the wholesale part of the gas tax. We would pass the DMV fees we would pass the consumer sales tax and that kind of stuff. We would pass the PIT reduction. You know, we would eliminate the rich part and everything. And then we would go to a bond 90 days from, from whenever it was passed and you're talking about. And at that point in time, the people would vote on the ability to put it all together and generate a big number where we could do all the roads work. That's what we'd do. How much money is the SOS fund in this current plan? How much are you 25 asking? million. 25. Yeah. What sort of reception did you get from the Democrats in the caucus to the, the latest plan? I, I, I thought it was very good, Phil. Very good. Do you have a similar presentation to Republicans? No, I don't, but I, I would gladly do it, you know, and, uh, uh, and I'll be calling. I'll be calling them as soon as we leave here, and uh, and offering that. Governor, the Senate has already gone in and gaveled out for the day. They won't come back until 11 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, I mean, you said you would like for this to happen today. It's obviously not going to happen if the Senate has already gone. So, can you react to that? Well, I, I didn't know that. I just, you know, like I said, this is this is a moving target all the time here. That's for sure. And. Uh, I didn't, I didn't know that they had, they had come in and gone. You know, the last report I got is they were going to call, they were going to caucus amongst, amongst themselves at some point in time this afternoon. And so, you know, maybe, maybe that'll be an opportunity for me to go in and, and talk to them. With, with that action in the Senate, though, do you think that means it's incumbent or there's more pressure on the House to take action? I, I don't really know how to answer that, Ash. That, that wouldn't be, I, I really, I think it's incumbent on, on us all to take action. You know, this business of being down here on the taxpayer's dime is no good. It's just no good. And, and we can say what we want, but, but here's, here's the thing. We, we, can, we can jump up in arms and say, well, we don't like the PIT because it's helping the rich and everything. You know, well, it's never been, it's never meant to be that way. It was never meant to be that way. You know, and I have, I have stood rock solid steadfast in my belief wholeheartedly, and that is the wealthy need to pull the rope. They need to pull the rope more. And so, you know, I, uh, this, you know, I think at the end of the day, if we don't pass this, what I fear more than anything happening is just this, is there's going to be some level of carnage. If you don't pass this, you know, there's going to, there has to be some level of real hurt. You know, I can't tell you if that level stops with WVU and Marshall. 
But if they get hurt, we all get hurt. If it stops with the teachers, that we don't give them a pay raise. You know, if it stops with whatever. I mean, if you end up with a $30 million hole, you know, public broadcasting was $4 million. You know, that would be bad to lose. It just absolutely, if we don't do this, we're going to lose. Some people, there's going to be some level of real pain. We don't need to have that pain. We don't need to put something else on our people. And I'm telling you, the numbers work so good in this, it'll blow you away. This is so much opportunity for us, and it's just off the chart. Now, the other thing is in our roads package, if we don't pass our roads package in here in its entirety, and you're waiting on a boat or whatever it may be, and what if it doesn't go our way? What if it doesn't go our way? I mean, just think about it. Then everything unravels, everything. If you don't have those roads jobs, you might as well batten down the hatches and it's over. I mean, it's over in every way. Not only do the roads jobs give us real hope and real prosperity, but really and truly, they give us an apprenticeship program. You may forget this, but they give us, a, you know, we're to bid those roads jobs labor intensive. What that means is that you're going to have an on-the-job train site, a training site for people to, for, for retraining or apprenticeship to learn how to pour concrete, lay rebar, weld, drive a truck, whatever. That's one thing that, that you may forget about the road but in addition to that, you have that 5% buyer's fee or bidder's fee, successful bidder's fee, that will fix this terrible drug epidemic. It'll fix it. It'll fix it. You know, so I'm not going to say that it'll eradicate it because we all are smarter than that, but we got to do something about that. So. Do we know how much revenue is produced by not giving the PIT cut over 300000 I really don't, Phil. I haven't, I haven't vetted that, but it's, but it's money. It's money. It is money. And it and it could be significant. So what's the first one that impacts the facility seven seven six or is it different? It's seven seven six with Eric Nelson Nelson's triggers. right there. There's so much that's coming from the business side in this in lots and lots and lots of ways on this broadening issue. You know, there's, 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 it, 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 it's really all this broadening is coming, that's coming at you, it's coming from the standpoint of about 60 to 70 percent business and, and, and 30 to 40 percent people. That's where the business contribution is coming from. And, 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 and the other contribution, you know, I said before, the wealthy need to step up, the businesses, the people, and our government. Well, you've got cuts in here, but they're almost benign. Now, nothing's benign. But you've got cuts in here that were my original cuts, and then you added in like 2%. Those 2% cuts continue on and all that stuff. So you've got some cuts. So the government is stepping up some. You got to give me the opportunity to get to to see what I would do as far as running the government. You haven't seen that yet, how I run the agencies and so on. But you got to give me some time on that. So the government is stepping up. The people are stepping up, and, and where the people are stepping up is DMV fees, uh, a little teeny bit on gas, and a little bit on consumer sales tax. Now just think about this just for a second. You know, if you're making twenty thousand dollars a year. By the time you take your house payment, your car payment, you know, food, everything, you're lucky. I mean, you would be doggone lucky if you spent $2,000 a year on consumer sales taxable items. 
Do you know what that would cost you? Seven dollars. Seven bucks. Two thousand times .35 above where you are today, seven bucks. That's what it is. I think, I could be doing the math wrong, but I think I'm right. You know? So, so the net net of the whole thing is this. A tax decrease to that person is going to put money in that person's pocket. A tax decrease to the person that's making 100000 or 70000 is going to put money in their pocket. And if we can do that, we need to do that. Now, the out years all work. And here's, here's another thing that somebody may come up with and may say, well, what about the out years beyond when the roads are finished? Well, do we not believe in this state that when we build new roads that, that we are going to continue to have jobs, new jobs? You know, that's what's going to happen to us. Now, and the other side of the coin is just this is, if we're going to believe the sky is falling five years from today, this sky has already fallen. If we don't do this, you think about where we are today. I mean, today we are dead 50th and everything coming or going. I have said it till I'm blue green and we have, we're broke. We have a deficit beyond belief. We're dead last and everything coming or going and we're worried about maybe where we're gonna be five years from today are you kidding me? And I really believe with all my soul, if we build these roads and we fix our roads and we create an atmosphere where people really want to come and can see how great this state really is, they will come. Governor, I appreciate your willingness to change the plan, um, but that's also something that you've gotten some criticism about. Um, I recognize that it looked like the previous plan was not moving toward passage, but now we're a week away from what some people are calling the drop dead date. And we've got at least one new plan. It looks like maybe three, count them all. Just a, just a necessity, back to life. Well, Brad, here's the thing. Now, let's be fair again. The, on the beginning days of the session, I went to the floor with both, house, both, both houses, both senates. I went to the floor. They said a governor had never done that before. And I started screaming to the mountaintop, the very, the very thing that we have to pass is a budget. We have to pass a budget. Now, I've tried every way to compromise and do everything. Today, the only thing that's really changing significantly in my deal is you're just taking out the taboo that the rich people are getting a break. Nothing else really has changed. You know, it's, it's just the same. The problem is, if we don't go with this, then where are we going to go? And it's not going to be my plan. It's where are we going to go? And this is what the other parties have said where we're going to go. Would you be inclined to veto either of the other two? I would be really inclined to veto anything that would come to me that will hurt our people more. But the problem, the problem lies in just this. You're going to be faced with the decision of just this, and that is shut down the government or have to do something that's going to hurt our people. If we don't do this and do this right now, you mark it down, I am right about what I said. There's going to be carnage come. And it's not a threat. It's not coming from me. If we don't do this, we're either going to have to shut down our government or do some version of this, and it's going to hurt somebody. The level of how bad it hurts is argumentative, but somebody's going to get hurt. And I don't think we need to do that. I have stood 
rock solid with the people from day one. I have said it to them blue green that all I want is goodness for West Virginia. You got to remember now, it's easy to forget this. I didn't create this mess. I came in and inherited this mess. I'm trying to fix it without hurting our people or our schools or our kids. That's what I'm trying to do. And I have tried and tried and tried and tried. So I wanted to take off the table so badly this benefit of the tax reduction for the wealthy that needed off. <coughs> it was hard to get Mitch and Tim to agree to that, but they did. Really, in the bottom of their heart, they want to go this way too. You know why? Because they don't want to have people get hurt. And the Democrats absolutely don't want it either, if they're smart. Now, the one thing we don't want to have happen here is this, and this is, and, and I would tell, I would tell Mitch's group, Tim's group, the Dems, the same thing. Think about this. If what we do is allow something to pass which hurts someone to gain politically, that is totally terrible. And we are capable in this building of doing those things. And I will not, I will not stand for it in any way. And I take the we out of it because I would say others are capable of doing something that they know is going to hurt somebody in order to gain politically. It's terrible. There's no place for that. Governor, if they aren't able to come fully to this agreement, say if it's, it's close to your plan, but they, it's not exactly what you want, and there is some level of funding necessary from the rainy day fund to find a balance, are you willing to sign a budget? Essentially what I'm saying is, are you willing to sign a budget that has some kind of funding necessary from rainy day to avoid a government shutdown? Well, I, I, I hope I've shown you that I'm willing to compromise and work with everybody because that's how I've, I've run my entire life. I'm willing to do just about anything that makes good sense. Taking money from rainy day does not make good sense. But I would not put it off the table that you wouldn't that you that, that I wouldn't look at it because you know. But you know, it's just going to net hurt us today. Today, you know, our uh, the people that set our rates on our bonds have already told us that you know they downgraded us. They say if you take more money out of rainy day, we're going to downgrade you more. It's just that simple. Just trying to visualize. Was the meeting with the Senate President and the House Speaker in here, or was it elsewhere? Within my office. Lasted Saturday morning. Lasted a couple hours. hours. Couple hours. Governor, you've met with lawmakers. You've met with Carmichael and Armstead. Uh, just in your opinion, where, where are we standing on this, and where, where are we going? I think I I really believe if. If everyone will do what they said they were going to do, I think where we should go, and this was my recommendation to the to the Senate and House D's, was agree to the to the Eric Nelson triggers and say let's go to a vote, and then vote. And I hope to goodness that they'll vote this way. You know. That's what we should do. We should have done that today to get off the taxpayer's dime. But where I think it's going to go is there. And I've got to have just enough trust in, in Tim Armstead and Mitch that they'll, they'll deliver what they said they were going to do and that the, 
the House D's and the, and the Senate D's will, will do just that. They'll vote. Because continuing this, this process of negotiation on and on is if we don't vote this way, then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to come to something that will hurt somebody and vote. That's what it'll be. I mean, there is no other choice. There is no other choice no matter how you cut it. You either vote this way and help a lot of people because you're going to be able to give an income tax break to almost everybody except the wealthy. So the wealthy, just like what Ashton asked, the wealthy are participating, the businesses are participating, the people are participating, and so is the government. But if you don't vote that way, then you're going to be you're going to be throwing grandma out on the street, or you're going to be hurting the autistic, or you're going to be hurting the universities, or hurting education, or doing something. Something. That's, I don't know how bad the something will be, but any something is bad in my book, when you don't need to do it. Governor, what are your understanding of what Delegate Nelson's triggers are? Because there have been about four plans presented so far. I haven't seen Eric Nelson's triggers, but I have absolute confidence in the times that I have been with him that he has been overprotective, overprotective and over conservative that, that he wants to build in assurances that we won't trigger unless things are really good. That's his philosophy. And I, and I have ev every reason to believe they'll be that way. Anybody else got anything? Summarizing real quick, the, the, the bottom line is just this. The belief that, that this was a way to help the wealthy with the income tax reduction, get it off the table. That's completely wrong. You know, what my belief has been from day one has been just specifically this, is try to find a pathway to prosperity, get rid of the drug <laughs> epidemic, and do it in a way without cutting and hurting our people. That's been my objective from day one. And that's what I think I've delivered. And that's what I think we should vote on, and that's what I think we should pass. I appreciate you coming. Y'all can all have one of these, and that'll make all this easier, and, and uh, be safe. Thank y'all. Thank you, Governor. Thank you. Thanks again for coming.